This is absolutely mind-blowing to me, and I think you'll appreciate it too. Do you remember all the things that people were saying about Georgia's election law? Do you remember the boycotts, all of the over-the-top rhetoric? Look at this headline. Now, just in case you don't remember, let me take you back a little bit and give you a montage of what people said about Georgia's election law. On one side of the debate, opponents are using terms such as Jim Crow 2.0, President Joe Biden not holding back today. This is nothing but punitive designed to keep people from voting. Make no bones about it. This is like peeling back um, to a time in history where we had very little say in, in how we were going to live and who we were going to elect. Jim Crow 2.0 is about two insidious things, voter suppression and election subversion. President Biden again yesterday referred to Georgia's new voting laws as, quote, new Jim Crow laws when he was asked if the Masters golf tournament should move out of the state. And so I'm convinced that we'll be able to stop this because it is the most pernicious thing. This makes Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. A boycott. What do you make of that uh, as somebody who's in a leadership position in Georgia? Do you think that either the state or these companies should be boycotted? Well, Joy, in fact, on Thursday at 12 o'clock in front of Coca-Cola, we're going to announce the beginning of a boycott on next Monday. Coca-Cola trending on Twitter this weekend, some calling to boycott the soda. People promising not to buy products from the Atlanta-based company until they denounce Georgia's new election law. This morning, it's game on, just not in Atlanta. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred announcing the league will move this summer's 2021 All-Star Game, pulling out of the Peach State, a direct response to Georgia's new voting law, which critics say restricts access to the ballot, especially for black voters. Home Depot is the latest target for those wanting to show their distaste for Georgia's new election law. CBS 46's Jamie Kennedy is live in Atlanta tonight with why the governor is calling that boycott a bad idea. And the National Black Justice Coalition is calling on professional golfers to refuse to play in the Masters in Augusta in April unless the law is repealed. We're also seeing major corporations here in Georgia under increasing pressure to speak out against the new law. That montage could have gone on for days, honestly. And I wasn't even cherry picking there. I mean, there was a lot of talk about how this was the end of voting freedom in the state of Georgia and Hollywood is never gonna make a movie here again. Of course, Hollywood's still filming, Coca-Cola still exists there. It shows you in the moment what politicians can do to create this fictitious world, this Tompkin village of sorts, where you think that the end is near and that all of society is actually against this new and terrible law. But how did it play out? Voting is surging in Georgia despite controversial new election law. According to the Washington Post, not exactly some right-wing publication, they say Tuesday's primary is the first big test of the legislation, which was opposed by voting rights group and groups and Democrats. Jim Eagle, Jim Crow 2.0. But when it's enacted, when the Spalding County Board of Elections eliminated early voting on Sundays, Democrats blamed a new state law and accused Republican-controlled board of intentionally thwarting Souls to the polls, a get out the vote program among black churches to urge their congregants or congregations to cash ba cast ballots after religious services. But after three weeks of early voting ahead of Tuesday's primary, record breaking turnout is undercutting predictions that the Georgia Election Integrity Act of 2021 would lead to a fall off in voting. By the end of Friday, the final day of early person in person voting, nearly 800,000 Georgians had cast ballots more than three times the number in 2018, and even higher than in 2020, a presidential year. How could they have gotten it so wrong? Well, they always do, don't they? Media pundits, all these political activists, they doom and gloom their way through news cycles, and they're never called on it when they get it wrong. Not only were they a little wrong, we have record turnout. Not only is it not Jim Crow 2.0, but it made it very obvious to anybody paying attention here, that this doesn't, this, this election law that they call controversial, doesn't do much to slow people's access to the polls. While there's much talk about, oh no, you're asking somebody for uh, an ID or they're for their driver's license number, Georgia has some of the highest rates, I think one of the highest rates of uh, people who are registered to vote in their state, and they're voting in droves. Despite this election law, maybe the truth is that the election law 
wasn't really Jim Crow 2.0 to begin with. Let me know what you think. And I'm always interested that the media outlets who build this stuff up and talk about all these boycotts, they never circle back to go, hey, looks like we got that all wrong. Do you think we're going to see that with this? Let me know in the comments below. Facebook.com slash the news junkie. Hit that follow button. YouTube.com slash the news junkie. Hit subscribe. Thanks to all my supporters. I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you in the comments. Thanks again. We'll talk to you real soon.